So Rachel was at the How To Summit, which I have talked about extensively. It was such a great event, wasn't it? It was a great event. Yes. And so you did a session, several sessions actually, about PR and press. And I wanted to have you on because this is something that I think organizers are absolutely sleeping on just entirely. So I was like so excited that you are with us today. So thank you. Of course. I'm happy to be here. Well, so people who went to the How To Summit, this will be a little bit of a refresh, but can you tell us a little bit about your journey on PR and on just on your business? Sure. I'll just do a quick business. But I was a lawyer for many years and then just decided it wasn't for me. And so I started getting into organizing about 15 years ago, which just seems crazy, and started my business I'm here in the Washington, D.C. area. It's grown over the years and I obviously used several different marketing techniques, I would say, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend and say that my number one most successful marketing technique would be using press. And I feel like I just kind of fell into it many years ago, and it has been something that I've worked at ever since. I haven't paid for press any of these 15 years, um, but I've landed myself in over 100 publications like Real Simple and Better Homes and Garden, CNN, Wall Street Journal, all of those publications. And I think it is the absolutely number one thing, at least for my business and for many of my coaching clients, like the number one thing that I suggest professional organizers or just really anyone in a service-based business looks to implement within their marketing strategies and techniques for their business. Well, tell us a little bit about why it's important, because I think a lot of people hear like, OK, well, I don't live in Washington, D.C., so what, why would I want to be quoted in the Washington Post? And I know it sounds silly, but can you give people the lay of the land of like why these things are important. Yes. So you live where you live. And I would say it's start with something local. It is important because you want to get your name out there to your local community. I mean, I would think about who your ideal client is first and then say, where are those people reading things? What are they listening to? What are they watching? And then you're going to go from there. You don't necessarily want to be in the Washington Post if you live in Minneapolis, for example. That will not get you clients in your local market. However, if you then go on to wanting to expand into the national market, then maybe a hit in the Washington Post would be helpful and successful. But you have to think about the whys of press and the wares first before you just start going at it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's too overwhelming. I don't want to do it. It's it's very complicated, but it really isn't. And I will say, I talked about this at the How To Summit. I am a very, very, very shy person. And I, I think most people don't know that because I am in the press or I, I do go on Instagram or whatever it is. But the press is just a way for me and what I think for other people listening is a way to talk about your business, a way to talk about who you want to serve and what your interests are and your and your business is just in general and stuff that's going on in the world that's related to your business or tips for your business. It's just such an amazing conduit to get the word out there and education. And so I really look at it as a thing to serve anyone who is listening to whatever I'm talking about or reading it, but it's a way to hit a lot of people versus just the people who you're working with locally. Well, and I love what you said, too, about you are not someone who is like, hey, please shine a spotlight on me. I think that's what and I want to talk about that a little bit. because yes. what Most people say about networking or any of these other things that might make us a little bit uncomfortable is, yeah, well, I don't really I don't love having my picture taken. I don't really love being out there. Like, how have you been able to get over some of that? Yeah, I feel like when you start a business, no one talks about this and they're like, yeah, but you're the base. So you got to go. I mean, photo shoots, hate them. Press and being in the spotlight, 100% hate it. And so because of that networking, like I do it if I can, but then that exhausts me. That's my personality. Like I will go and then I'll have to come home and, and be in my house for a little bit. No, I mean, I just hibernate for like three weeks. Exactly. <laughs> I just feel like it's, it's one of those things that who else is going to talk about your business and know the most about your business or know the most about your clients or want to serve the people that you want to serve clients, other people who just want to read organization tips, for example, than you. And you're your best spokesperson. I mean, that's why, again, I've never paid for press because I've always come back to me. And yes, I don't want to be in the spotlight, but that's not what I'm using the press for. And so if I switch the way I'm thinking about press and how it actually helps my bottom line, like triple, I don't know what the percentage is, then I realize, okay, I'm not going after press to be in the spotlight. So someone could be like, oh, yeah, she was on 
X, Y, or Z TV show or in this magazine. I'm doing it so that I can grow the bottom line of my business. And then I think about it in such a different way that it's like, oh my gosh, if I wasn't doing this, what would my business look like? And if I slept on not doing press, I would not have the numbers that I have in my business. So it just makes financial sense. It makes marketing sense to me as a no brainer. So once I flipped the switch of, you know what, I'm not doing this for the big lights and headlines and all of that, but I'm, I'm shy, but I'm not doing it for that. It, it really changed the way I thought about press. Well, I like what you said too, about it changing the lens to it's a service. You are actually serving people by bringing this message to them, whether it's even if it's someone that maybe never uses your services, you get to the people that will use your services, but you can also get to service people that maybe would never be able to to utilize your services too. Yeah. Yes. And to get even nitty gritty more into it. But the people I work with in the press, I've worked with for 15 years, let's say. And all of those people come back to me and there's a reason they've come back to me. And I keep asking them, well, why do you come back to me? They either switch publications or they go up on their own or they come back to me because I provide so much more than they're asking me. They might ask me one or two questions, but I'm writing paragraphs because I want, again, want to serve them. If they do good and they post a story where tons of readers are responding or, or writing in and thank you, that then they're going to come back to me and say, this person served me so well. So, and I served my audience so well. So it's kind of this whole little line flowing down of I'm serving obviously the readers, but in, in turn, the author or the writer. Um, and so they're much happier and then their publications much happier with them. So it's all this connected, whatever you want to say, but I just think it's, I'm doing it because I want to provide value. And yes, it's free value. It is my time, but I am so passionate about everything I'm writing about to a degree with different degrees that it shows through, I think. And that's why I don't talk a lot about, I don't know, I'm not loving garages. I will comment on garages, let's say, for example, but I'm sure my passion shows through in other topics much, much greater. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of these low, so starting local, because I think a lot of people just hear like, oh, the, the real simple or the better home. We we hear about these big publications. I think when we hear, when we think about press and PR, we think about the big publications, Martha Stewart Living, whatever. Tell us a little bit about local things that people should be considering. Yes. So I, my biggest press hit, people always ask me, what's your biggest press hit? To date, it is a local newsletter. And that changed the trajectory of my business when I first started. And people, I don't even think the newsletter is actually in existence anymore. It was called Daily Candy. It was for local. Every single major city had one. Um, and I actually had to discount my services to be in the newsletter. But I just decided for me, that was why I wanted to do it and get my name out there locally. It changed exponentially. And so locally is where you want to start, especially if you are looking for clients. Locally is where you don't aim for the Martha Stewart and the real simple. And that's not to say you're not going to get there one day, but that doesn't actually help you at all with local businesses, local networking, all of that. So I always say start local and that's as local as a school newsletter. Or if your local interior designer sends out a newsletter to her list. Get on that list. Where are your referrals coming to, coming from? Look to see if they have small newsletter lists or big newsletter lists, or if there is a local paper at your supermarket, like Whole Foods or a co op. Do they have a monthly paper that goes out that you can write an article for? These things don't have to be these giant, scary, real simple Martha Stewart living. I want them to be obtainable because that's where your clients are reading and watching and looking. Local news. What programs have this sort of lifestyle segments that you can go on and show your skills on TV? And if TV scares you, there's podcasts. I know there's tons of podcasts around here that talk about local restaurants, bars, happenings, all that kind of stuff. You want to be on that podcast as the local organizing expert for your area. I tell people all the time, you've got to look at local podcasts because there are more than you can possibly imagine because everybody has a podcast now. <laughs> and there are a ton of them out there. And whatever your niche is, if you are, if you like to work with moms, I guarantee you there's a local one for moms in your area. And the local television thing too is you guys, I mean, we might not realize it because I don't watch a lot of daytime television, 
There are local television shows for every municipality, unless you live in a very tiny area. Everything, everything. And I totally agree with you on the podcast. I feel like that's an underrated area where people can actually go on locally. And those people are looking for guests, just like you're looking to go on. But before you scatter yourself too thin and because there are going to be a million options, no matter what area you are in, I would think about why and who your ideal client actually is. Because if you don't have that in mind, then you could go on, I'm making this up, a local dentist podcast where like dentists aren't your aren't your niche. Or you could go on a mom's podcast and moms are actually not your clientele. You're working with the elderly on down. Sure. And so think about all of the different clients and or narrow it down. I'm a big fan of narrowing it down. And then spread your wings and say, where can I go locally to find this press? Well, and I love that, too, because you are exactly right, is you do not want to go do something. You don't want to go to the work and go promote yourself and get something and then have it be like, oh, these are zero percent of my ideal clients. Right. Right. Was- it's time. I mean, the press is time. It's just it's time. And so you got to think about it and be strategic about where you want to go. Write down those top 10, top 20 places that have your ideal client that would that people are listening to locally. So if there's I'm just making this up, 25 podcasts that are mom podcasts, what are the top two? What are the top three that are really going to give you the most bang for your buck or where the moms who have the income or the interest or live in that actual area? really are and are really listening to because again there's so much out there which i think a lot of times intimidates people because you don't know where to actually start well and then the the point that you made which is very important and as someone who has a podcast who we are always looking for content right (laughs) like it is very challenging so whether it's television or a podcast or anything else it is very challenging to make sure that you're constantly churning out content And so there are people who are looking for that, but you also have to demonstrate why you're an interesting client or potential, why you're an interesting potential thing for their audience too. Right, right. It's not just an email. Hey, I'm a professional organizer. Would love to be on your podcast because then they would be like, reject. No, I mean, I I guess, but you have to be talking about something interesting, whether it's something currently going on that you can relate to or seasonal. A lot. I talk about a lot about this in my press course or something that is interesting to you. That is something that is a passion project of you. I have a lot of coaching clients that are working with people with ADHD or something else that really you have a passion for, then that's what you want to be pitching to talk about. Because again, the end point, what is the end point that we're looking for? It's press around your specific business. And so just being this generalist, I don't really think helps too much, but it is going for the what you want to be known for, what types of clients you want, especially when you're talking about local markets. Yeah. So let's say that someone has pitched. This is something that comes up a lot when I talk to people and they are they have gotten something. So they've gotten a a TV spot or they've gotten something like that. And then they are paralyzed of like, what am I supposed to do? So one of the things that I try to remind people is like, you've got to have little sound bites, right? Like you've got to have kind of some preparation for if you are going on something like this. So can you talk to us a little bit about how to prep? Let's just fast forward and say you've gotten something great. I think preparation is key. It goes to the same thing of when I'm writing for a magazine or something online. Let's just take a TV show since you mentioned that. Prep is key. I will probably, most TV segments are like three to five minutes, if that. Okay, that seems long, five minutes actually. But like, let's say two to four minutes. I'm prepping like, again, this is if you have enough time to prep. I've had a lot of people that will be like, can you be here tomorrow? So that's a choice whether you can do that or not. But in the downtime, I tell people be prepping for when those people come because press is we need it yesterday. We need it in eight hours. We want you on the next day. And so again, a lot of those you can do, but a lot of those you're going to have to turn down because you don't have the prep in your arsenal. So in this downtime where you are pitching and waiting, I would just suggest prepping for things. Again, you don't know exactly what it's going to be, but if you are pitching certain topics, three to five topics, be prepped in your arsenal around that. So for example, on TV, if they were to call you and say, hey, we love that segment that you pitched. We want you on next Tuesday. What you're going to do, TV is mostly live and it's visual. So you're prepping 
going down a line in a segment. And I would prep number one, look at that TV show and see what have the segments looked like before. Are they with one anchor? Are they with two anchors? Are you at a big table? Are you sitting? And ask those questions ahead of time because that will also help with your prep. Do you need to bring in props? Probably for TV, the answer is yes. So thinking about what those props are going to look like and set them up on the same type of table that is on that TV segment or a round table or a long table, if you can, and go down and rehearse what you are going to say. You also are going to have to account for there's going to be time in between that anchors are talking to you on TV. You're going to be nervous. I think everyone usually speeds up their thing. You don't want to be left with nothing to talk about and or you're going to have to worry about chit chat that goes on and then hit your points. So practice, practice, practice. I mean, write it out. Think about questions that they might ask you. Provide the TV stations with questions to ask you. I mean, a lot of times, again, it's not that they're necessarily lazy. They just don't know exactly what they're trying to get out of the segment, especially if you pitched it, right? So prepping all these things ahead of time, your outfit, you're not going to want, I mean, I know that sounds maybe crazy to some people, prep your outfit. Not at all. I mean, you don't, I love black, just like the next girl, but I'm not wearing black on TV. That's when I get my color out. Right. Um, Got to think about these things beforehand. What shoes? You're not putting on brand new shoes that day that are heels. And like, you're going to be standing for, again, it's not that long, but by walking there, standing, if you're in heels that are killing you, those are, it's going to show somewhere in your body. So prepping literally everything from the segment to your outfit to getting out the door, as us organizers I know like to do, like just prep. I mean, this is the time to shine in that way. Well, and I think oh, oh, sorry. I was just yeah. over deliver all every single time. I I've never regretted over delivering. And yes, maybe I only get to two of the five tips, but I just feel like that much more prepared. So that actually calms my nerves when I'm again for a TV segment if we're taking that for an example. Well, I think too, learning how to talk in sound bites, because that's something that we're used to talking to people like a little bit more long form, or we might have a client for three hours, but learning how to, like you said, two to four minutes, you've got to be really succinct, which is not a skill that I personally have. And so it, it, the times that I've had to do interviews, I've had to see like, okay, I've got to dial myself back a little bit, right? So it's just realizing that it's a different form that you are dealing with. Yeah. I mean, again, where I know we're using TV, but think about if you are watching TV and if you haven't watched this actual segment, go and watch it and see when someone's on there, you are going to only take away a few different tips. So what are those tips that you really want someone to go, oh, wow, I just watched Rachel and I learned one, two, three, or I learned one, two, three, four, whatever it is, you want to know what those things are and not making it up in the moment because that will never work. It's it's not going to be a great plan. So. No, never, never. It never has worked for me, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's talk about if there are people that are like, please stop talking about television. It's giving me anxiety just thinking yes. about it. Like there are a lot of ways that you can get into press that have nothing to do with a camera being shoved in your face, right? Correct. I don't like TV. But every single time I'm like sweating and but they're always live. But again, I've done it because I wanted to just be more versatile in my press. And again, once you do it, I think you feel better afterwards. You can go on to the next one. But there are podcasts, as we talked about. And then there's a ton online. So online, I mean, the amount of places that you can be online are endless. And so we talked quickly about the magazines and print. And print magazines go to print many months in advance. So that's a whole different ball game. But online, I think, is the easiest way to actually dip your toe into press. Um, and so locally, if we're talking about that, think about those local places that have online newsletters or online forums that you could write for. But it's just thinking about where you, where your client would read online. So again, local events. If you are hosting a local event and speaking at your public library. I would then go to the public library, talk about, do they have a newsletter that you can write for? Is there something that attaches to the library that talks about events that there's just a little bit more of a blurb that you could then write for, whether it's expanding on the topic you're talking about or something else? There's so many options that online for me is the easiest. And when I say write, a lot of people always say, oh my gosh, do I have to write the article? The answer is no. You have to write a pitch 
which is different than writing the article. But if someone came back to you and said, hey, I loved that article that you want to do on, I don't know, sustainable products in your kitchen, can you send me a few tips or they'll give mm-hmm. you some questions to answer? So you're not writing the article for them. Although I feel like a lot of the times I'm, I'm giving them a lot of information to yeah. use the article. You're not actually writing the article for them. So if you're, if you think you're not the best writer or your grammar isn't great or you don't worry about it, that's the, and I think that stops people from actually pitching because they feel like they have to write the whole thing, but don't worry about it. It's not about that when you're writing. Well, and I think that that's a great point is all of, so a lot of the things that we're talking about are things that we're asking you to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. Yes. And because I will hear a lot, I'm not a writer, I can't blog, I can't do, but I want you to think about expanding because these are things that are important to make your business work. Like all we're trying to do is help you make your business work. And so if you don't feel like you're a strong writer, let's figure out how to give you some more confidence in that. Or let's figure out how you can take something that you would say in talking to someone and then put that into writing. There are a lot of things that you can do to to hone those skills. Right. And I would say, and that's very true, I would say it's like, it's one of those tools in my toolbox for as a business owner that maybe I didn't think about having to do when I started my business because all I thought about was social media. But it's the same thing when someone says to me, oh, I hate going on social media or I don't know how to do the pit, the captions or the reels or whatever it is. It's just the same way. It's a different medium to get the word out there. And I like to say social media, we keep scrolling. We don't see half of the people we actually follow and whatever. Go to the point that you are going to try something. And again, you might not get and you probably won't get a hit that first pitch. But I say keep up with it and think of it as another tool to marketing. And don't spread yourself too thin because you can't be, you're going to end up being everywhere and nowhere type of thing. If that's the case. And so you have to be strategic about it, just as I would say, be strategic about another social media platform, but then see where is it impacting my bottom line, right? I mean, if it is getting you more clients or people say, I always ask every single client that walks through our door, where did you find me? Yeah. Not always going to translate and them saying, oh, I just saw you in the Washington Post, right? But it lends to credibility also. I mean, If I, as a consumer, look at there's 10 organizers in my area, which is not true. There's like 10 organizers. A million. Every block. (laughs) But but if I were to say, oh, I was just in the Washington Post and my nine other quote unquote competitors were not. As a consumer, I'm like, whoa, the Washington Post thinks Rachel is good enough and vetted Rachel. I want to go with the one that the Washington Post wants to go with. So that's always also been my strategy is like, okay, it's going to somehow turn into bottom line numbers, which it does because they are already vetting you. I mean, that's huge. You're not having to vet yourself. This this publication, your local paper, whatever it is, is vetting you already. You're going on someone's podcast and they're saying, I want this guest. This guest is good enough to be on my podcast. So they're good enough for you to hire and you're going to put yourself during that podcast. So, you know, it's just, I kind of was rambling there, but it gets uh, it gets me so excited, and I feel like it's such a missed opportunity for small business owners um, that they maybe take some time away from Instagram and commenting on people's on Instagram stuff and go on and figure out some press hits because that's going to be lasting business um, for you. It's a huge credibility. Cred, easy for me to say. It's a huge credibility builder. Yes. Because like you said, and and this is important, you can leverage it for so long. <laughs> I was on our local television station, which I mean, in Twin Cities is pretty big. Is that it was four years ago. Is it still on my website prominently? Absolutely it is because I was on CARE 11, right? Like that's a big deal. And so you can continue that going on for a really long time. And it's also about, because my passion is building people's digital foundations, it's great SEO for you. 100%. It, you get backlinks on someone else. It's it's credibility for your website and for you as an organizer. It's incredibly important. I mean, that SEO, I'm so glad you brought that up because people don't think about that. I mean, they're, I'm not doing press for fun. I mean, it's just, it's not. I'm doing it as a business. It gets so many backlinks. That's how people come to my site. I mean, and that's how I can sort of cut through everybody else and in a lot of different areas because I have all these backlinks to my site. 
they are posting about me, a TV station. They then repost their content online. Then you get the video. Sometimes then they put it on YouTube. Then you can use your press, just like you said. I mean, for years, I would be, I've been using my stuff for years and you can repurpose that. You can then write your own blog and link to the TV spot that you did. You can then put it on social media, multiple different ways. You can then put it onto Pinterest, which is another way that Google people find you. So utilizing that press is its gold. Um, and you can do so much with it. And in your signature line, like something as small as that was recently featured in whatever the publication is, the, whatever the, the news station is. That to me, again, when I'm a client getting that email with a signature line that has something like whoa, you're credible. You are not just some random person that hung a shingle and said you're an organizer. Right. So tell us a little bit about the pitching process, because I think that's probably the, the thing that will stop most people. They're like, okay, cool. I'm sold on this. Like, but how, how exactly do I go about it? Can you talk a little bit about that process? And so I'm going to, and I will talk about this later, but I have a press course where I give you some yep. templates on how to actually do it because I do feel like that stops people and I don't want it to. And especially because people think I'm not the best writer and all that. Just remember, whoever it is, writer, TV producer, all these people, they get hundreds of emails a day. So the point of this is number one, cutting through all of that and how do you do it? And number two, writing pitches that are timely, that have interesting topics. And again, for the organizing world, because obviously I know that the best, we don't have a ton of topics that are like related to world news events. That's just not something that happens. Like we can't comment. I mean, I've tried. I just did a story with some celebrities and that, okay, that comes in once around a mood. We're not commenting on world events with organizing. It just doesn't fit for the most part. So you're creating the story. And so you have to be a little bit creative. So number one, I would go back and look at what has been published on that publication first, online, in a magazine, in TV, and say, how are these publications actually writing, reading, whatever the thing is? How are we hearing about organizations in that form? Because that's going to help you with your pitch because you don't want to be pitching. And I'm going to take something, a magazine and uh, a local magazine, and they do a lot of top 10 lists, for example, three reasons why you should get your garage organized before the winter. You don't then want to be pitching something that doesn't have a number in it or doesn't relate to the way that they're actually writing. Because if you then go against the grain, there's more chance that they're probably not going to pick you up. Um, again, that doesn't mean that they always do it the same way, but that's just a way to start to say, okay, how was that story written? And that's how I can start to do my pitch. When I'm pitching, so I'm first looking at that. Um, I'm first looking at the last time they did maybe a story about that. Um, again, I'm talking about an online magazine. When is the last time they did organizing your kitchen to get it ready for a holiday? If it's something that they've done recently, then you have to think about it. That's probably not something that they're going to pick up again, unless it's really seasonal and it again, had there's so much time in between or so much has gone on in the world that you can then talk about it because publications and places don't want to repeat stories. So think about that and then make it as succinct and interesting as possible. So these people don't want to read three pages on how to get a garage organized. It's like a two to three sentence. How do you get your garage organized? And what's your interesting or what's your specific spin on how you're going to do it versus the next professional organizer that's going to email them two days later about organizing their garage. Well, and I would just like everyone to think about, by the way, we should all be thinking about this all day, every day. It's about them. So whether that is a potential client that is coming to you, we're going to talk about how we are going to help them. It's not about us. It's about them. And say, especially with these publications, any publication, any sort of press, how are you going to get them viewers, get them readers, get them people, get people interested in what they have? Remember, it's a business on the other side, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a blog, all those things are still a business. And so it isn't about you. Yes, you're going to go on and you're going to have, if let's say TV, organizing expert under your name, professional organizer, when they do the bio online, it's that's great. And that's press and a way to 
give you exposure and a link to your um, website or a link to your Instagram, whatever it is. But in the end, they're bringing you on, like just like you said, to help their business. And so yeah. you need to show on the pitch, you're going to help their business. That's not to say you can't talk about you and your expertise, but it, again, in that pitch, it is not about you. It is about how you're going to help their client, their consumer, their reader, their listener. And then you're showing why you can give that expertise. Yeah. I I will just throw in here a, a couple personal stories as someone who gets pitched a lot. So I get pitched as a podcast or as a podcast creator. And what I will tell you is a couple, well, the best story ever was someone who pitched me. I couldn't make this up if I actually tried, but it was a PR person that said, I have XYZ. She's an expert in aquatic weed control in ponds and lakes. Ah. And I, I wish, I wish I could. And I go, it's literally called the pro organizer studio podcast. Like, Hi. and so and here, so that one is particularly egregious, but the the reason I want to tell this story is I get a ton of pitches from people who will say, I love the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. I loved your recent episode on Blah. It's a cut and paste thing that they have just pulled from the internet. Yep. They have not actually done any research whatsoever on the podcast. And then they proceed to pitch me something that is ludicrous, that has nothing to do with professional organizing. Or I will have people that pitch me that say, I'm Julie, I'm a professional organizer. I want to talk about how much I love organizing and the benefits of being organized. That is not something that my audience cares about. My audience already knows the benefits of being organized. And so just what you're saying is really important. Yeah. You have to do the research on what you're pitching and whether it actually makes sense to that audience. A hundred percent. And I mean, people just in regular emails, like, the they're spelling your name wrong. They're yes. not. I mean, look at those things again. You don't have to be an English major. I went to law school. I'm like not known for writing pitches, right? I'm I'm learning all of this on my yeah. own. But do your research. And yes, it might be time consuming on the front end, but it is going to save you so much time on that back end because you're actually going to be pitching things that might make in make, make them interested versus them looking at the email going, "What were you going to talk about a zoo or whatever the thing is." Right. And, no sense. And you just wasted all your time doing that pitch. And so I wouldn't be discouraged if you, number one, don't get a response from your first initial pitch, or it's a no at that point, because number one, if it's a no, I actually think that's great because then you can go back to them and be like, hey, remember in December, I pitched you about X, Y, or Z. And then you come back and be like, okay, well, here's a new spin on number two of the four that I pitched you. This is why I think it's relative now or recent nap, whatever. But I think a no is not a no forever. I always think of a no, unless they're really saying like no forever. But I think a no is just, uh, okay, great. It isn't going to work this time because you have no idea. The stories they're working on, the, the articles they're working on, you just have no concept about that. And so I had to learn that for myself. Like, don't take it too personally. I feel like we're in show business when I yeah. tell people about this. But it's just like, it's not personal. They have their own stuff going on. They have editors that are telling them what stories to write. It's not personal. Just like when a client might not necessarily choose you and goes with a different organizer or you said no to a certain, it's not personal. And so I just want people to build like a thicker skin because again, I know it sounds like a lot of work to go and do the research and write and wait for the response, but it pays dividends. Trust me. Um, it really helps with clients coming to you and your credibility. And then I don't know about most people who are listening to this, but my clients talk with other clients and that's yep. how, and I've lasted for 15 years with a lot of referrals. And so you just have to continue to do good, be in these places, be where people can quote unquote, see you. And that also is, helps you continue, continue to have a long list of clients, continue that business going. And I do think that press has, I mean, I know press has been that number one thing for me. I we don't read as much on Instagram. I don't do all these other yeah. things because of press. Well, and I, we cannot, I mean, I work with pro organizers all over the place as, as you do too. And referrals continue in our hyper-connected online 24 seven world. Personal word of mouth referrals are still a ginormous part of so many people's businesses. 
I, I, I mean, I've been, I feel like a dinosaur every time I say that, but I mean, like when I started and there was no Instagram, like I right. had a newsletter and I actually tell you the story. We're like, you're like an OG organizer, by the I, way. I'm old. Okay. <laughs> that, I know I call myself that. And it's so funny to hear other people say that, but I've been around for a very long time. There wasn't social media. There wasn't this connection of online, which is so amazing now that we have this and we get to meet other people and connect with them online, but we didn't have that. And so I've just always done the referral thing. And this is, again, coming from someone who's shy, doesn't like networking, whatever. Yeah. But anytime I'm talking to someone with the press, I'm become not becoming friends with them, but like I'm becoming friendly with them. I'm providing them, I'm doing good work so, I, so that they do continue to talk about me or come back or let's say there's another writer in their office doing a story on organization and that person in the team meeting is like, you know what? I once had this organizing expert three years ago. Why don't you call her? Because she was great. I want that to come out of that writer's mouth. And that continues and helps with my longevity and is referral in that way. And then the client, it's all connected. But really quick, a story that, so I, again, started when there was no Instagram. And so I did a newsletter. I had a very small newsletter list. And there happened to be a Washington Report, the Post reporter, on my newsletter list, and people at the House of Summit heard this story, I think, in one of the groups. But I wrote a newsletter that I was pregnant with identical twins and going to go be organizing for them, blah, blah, blah. And she wrote me back and she was like, can we come do a photo shoot at your house when they're six weeks? And I was like, six weeks from having- yeah, That sounds great. I mean, amazing. Like, what could what? possibly go wrong? And, and so again, I was like, well, could I wear black? I've just had twins and it's only been six weeks and she's like nope color we're only going to take a picture from the waist up I was holding the girls in front of my chest and like on my waist and she's like don't worry it'll be great it then got picked up by the Associated Press was in hundreds of max full and then she's like oh well I didn't have control over the pic the picture getting it was the whole full-fledged picture which again as any new mom knows like that's really not what you want to be taking pictures of, like your whole body um, six weeks after in breastfeeding, whatever. It was just a mess. But that article got picked up in hundreds of different papers. The Washington Post printed it. It was a picture that I've never seen. It was be below the fold. I don't even think they do those large pictures anymore. Yeah. Like it was a centerfold in the picture. It was, so and I got calls left and right. And the article was about organizing for twins. So it wasn't just, twin moms calling me it was all these moms calling me because they're like oh the way that they presented like it sounded like I had my stuff together right I'm organizing right. and having a mom for twins so people want what I have so that story from my newsletter to the Washington Post and then I did numerous stories with her afterwards because it was such a big hit for the paper I mean I I never I mean I was so grateful and I just had to like say to myself like okay it doesn't matter how you look it literally doesn't matter how you look. it doesn't yeah. it really doesn't that's that's the truth and we're all our own worst enemies on that right. which is a whole other podcast for a whole other time but like yeah no one's looking at you as much as you think you're looking at you is is the biggest yeah. is the biggest thing but I, I think your point too is and what we cannot ever know is how many tentacles something is going to have right it's so have no idea how it's connected yes. to I mean you And that's why I'm always like, as much as I can, yes, and doing the best I can with everything. It might not be the, the topic that I really want to be talking about, but I'm going to give it Perfect. my all because you just never know. That producer might go to this show. This person might now work for this. And I've had people move all over and still contact me. You just never know what's going to happen from it. So I'm like, do your best at all times. Whatever yeah, I love it. So if you could tell people, if you could try to give people some some inspo, if they're just listening to this and like, oh, this just like hurt me just a little bit. Like it's it's really scary. Like, can you just tell us like, hey, go out and pitch two publications or what what would you tell people? I would say, number one, figure out who your ideal client is before you start anything. So after you figured out your ideal client, figure out, let's just say five places where they are. What are they reading? I mean, it could be a variety. I personally would do a variety of things, whether it's watching, listening, reading, online, in print, anything. Pick those five and do great pitches to those five. And do not do the same pitch to all five. Right? Great advice. Because you don't want to be pitching the same thing and then two of them hit if that is the case. And then just don't be discouraged. If 
zero of those five come back to you and say, we want to do a story now. We want to have you on the podcast now. Don't take it personal. Go back, regroup, maybe rejigger things of how you've written it or who you're looking at and go back and continue to pitch. I yeah. promise you it will pay off. It will give your business a huge, huge help, both in credibility and your bottom line. Well, and I love the don't get discouraged because I because you are going to have some things that it maybe isn't a fit and that is okay. It's about finding the right place that is a fit and just the right timing. Sometimes it is just an absolute luck scenario and it has nothing. To, so that no is not, like you said, it's not a no forever. It's a no just for that moment. Right. And I will say, because I just was thinking about this, like press also includes businesses, right? So we have local businesses that do newsletters to their employees and all of that. Those are great clients. And so we've had this like, what is it called? Sociology, whatever, something to do with um, psychology and whatever those associations or the World Bank or whatever these places are, they all have people who work for them and newsletters. And so again, if you're ideal is working at that business, go to those newsletters or go to those businesses and pitch to see, do you have a newsletter I could write for? Is there something I could be talking about? Because that's where your client is. And yeah. it presses not just magazine podcasts. There are also businesses that have newsletters, companies that have newsletters, local bloggers. We didn't even talk about that. Local bloggers where you could write an article for it. There's just, there's so much opportunity that I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I really want people to hone in on those places. And that's a great point too, because again, as, as someone who is a content creator, it is exhausting to be on the content creation wheel all the time. And so as much as possible, when you think about all of the, like you're giving some really, really great ideas of things you can go pitch for people that would love to have something that is like pre-made ready to go for them. I mean, it's like easy, an easy yes. I always want it to be an easy yes for someone. And then that's an easier way to get your message out, to get what you want to be talking about out. And so again, like you said, people are tired. If yeah. You, if you can be constantly blogging or pitching, or I just, I can't imagine. Um, and so you are doing a service for these people and you are bringing content to their audience yeah. uh, that their audience wants to then hear or read whatever see. And so you're helping them do their job better. Yeah. So that's a plus. It is. Well, and right now, I think this is the kind of the time of year that things maybe start to slow down a little bit for organizers. And the, so clients are maybe doing holiday stuff. And this is a great time, I think, to concentrate on building some of these things in your business that you may not have time to concentrate on other times of the year. So Tell us a little bit about, so you've designed a press course where you teach all of this. So tell us a little bit about what is going on. Yeah. So it's the power of press. I did it after many years of people asking me how I did it. And again, as I mentioned, I don't pay for press. And so it is different, different modules and it's going to teach you where to look for press, how to look for press. It's going to give you templates. It is going to get literally give you the roadmap because I want to provide this for other. I, I'm really passionate about doing this for whether it be for other professional organizers, other people who have clients and service businesses. It's a must. And so I am giving your audience $100 off and you can, there's running in the show notes, but just have to use POS in the code and I'll provide you guys with a link. But I am so excited about it. It gives you a hundred thousand worksheets, I feel like, to actually do the work. Because like you, I absolutely agree. When you're not busy with your business and or taking time out of your business to work on this, will then grow your business tenfold. And yeah. so if you are slower and or you're writing in your schedule to do a course like this or to take the time to learn about it and how to actually do it from someone who has mastered it, I feel like. Um, it is going to pay off in the end because without it, you're just going to keep doing the same thing and seeing other people get the press and have their businesses grow and feel like, I mean, that's at least how I was when I first started until I actually did it. And again, I will say I'm shy. I don't have a business or press and marketing, whatever background I went to law school. So this is all on my own. And I really give you as much information as I can that's in my brain for this because I really feel passionate about people getting pressed for their business. It's always great to get the cheat codes from someone who has already done all of the work. Like one of the things I say is I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> like that's, you have done all of the work and it's done. 
And I will say the landscape is competitive now um, in terms of press and, and all of that. And so I want these people who are taking, like, you get it um, and you can get it. And again, people do it on their own. That's great. But I'm always one of those people like you. I've gone through the mistakes. I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, and I want people to learn from my mistakes and just have the templates and go in and do it. And it gives you some ideas on what to pitch, how to pitch, places to pitch, all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for everyone. I feel like 15 years in media is like dog years, though. Like you have way more experience than just 50. I mean, 15 years is, is a lot of experience, but like it's probably even more than that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, my children are almost 16 years old. And yeah. so that I also know um, how long it's been. But yeah, it's been a long time. And the the media landscape has also changed. And so but any of these techniques, I feel like you could use. And I talk about podcasts, newsletters, and I give you ideas on, on all of that. Um, but it has changed. But yet there are some things that are just so consistent. Um, and now I'm working with brands who want me for my media exposure. And I do stuff for their media exposure because it has been so successful on the client end and my, and my business end that I'm now working with. I've worked with for years, a ton of brands just on media for their products and services. So it's it works. It really works. Well, and that's one thing that we didn't really touch on. But the other thing, too, is I will frequently tell people, what are your goals for your business? And if it's in-home local organizing, yes. that is a segment that you can research and that's a segment you can work in. But also, if you have aspirations in your organizing business to be bigger or to have a national audience or to write a book or whatever it is, whatever your ambitions are, if you really want to be like an organizing influencer, because that is also a thing like there are there are other parts of your business that don't have to be in-home organizing that also you can expand into. And press is critical for those things. 100%. And that's why and we, it, we talk about it in the course. Like, what are your goals? There's a section for that. And we talk about it a little bit more because everyone's goals are not the same. And the press and where it's going to lead you is not going to be the same thing. So podcast, local, national, what you're actually wanting to do, you make a great point. It is not leading you all in the same direction. And so you have to be strategic about it. And again, my goals have changed over 15 years. When I first started, it was very different, but you got to be strategic and just sit down and do it. And I know when you're running the business, it's no, there's no time and all of that. And I still do all my press myself. I, even though I have a team, I'm always the one doing it because I'm so passionate about it. And I feel like no one can do it. And no one can be in my brain as much as I can be, but it's crucial. It's really crucial. And I feel like it can open so many different types of doors, like you were talking about influencer, brands, podcast, whatever, podcast of your own, a book of your own, but you have to be smart about where you're actually, it's not throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping some sticks. Right. Well, where can people find you on the great big wide interweb? So you can find me on my website, which is rachelrosenthal.co. Or you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Organizes. And then hopefully I will send you guys the link to the course yeah. and you'll purchase that and get all the press and more. I just, I really, I'm really passionate about that. And if people need individual coaching, I'm available for that also that you can see on my website around the press or around your business. But I just, I want people to try it and they'll get $100 off with your code and really hope that they'll dive into it again around the holidays, whenever it is, yeah. uh, take some time to do it. And I promise you it will be worth it. This is one of those things that if it if one thing lands, right, it could totally, like you said, change the trajectory of your business and it only takes that one thing. But knowing all of the pieces that go into it and being armed with that and knowing how to do it is really important. So yeah. And then using that press, like we talked about. Uh, thank you so much. This was like 40,000 pounds of information, which is amazing. Thank you so much. I am so happy to have been here. Thank you so much for having me and wishing everyone so much success and lots of press in their business. Well, and that's one of the things that I love about talking to people who have like you have organizing experience and you have all these other experience. It's not you are not just like, hey, I'm going to teach you how to do press. You have done it for your own organizing business. And so that's why that's why you know what you're doing. I kind of do. I like to say I do. <laughs> well, well thank, thank you so much. much.